Hey girl, it's nice to have you back again. Thank you for having me back, Cheryl. I really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. And so I had you before on my podcast and we talked about your art and so many other wonderful things. And then I see online you, um, actually there was another podcast you did about human design and yeah. I didn't know much about it. Um, I learned through a coaching program we were in, I learned a little bit about it. And then another friend of mine who talked about it. And so I took your quiz and then I got a little bit more curious and then I decided, okay, for my birthday, I'm going to treat myself because we talked about this. I love experiences more than like mm -hmm. physical gifts. And so I decided I am finally going to do this and I'm going to learn more about myself and my personality and all that good stuff. And it was such a great class with you. It was so, I learned so much and, you know, I just love your energy. So that was a big <laughs> bonus and um and we just have so much in common so very much so and I love I always I feel like it's a little treat for me when I go get to look at people's human designs and help them understand it because it is like I get to look at your soul a little <laughs> and so I always feel a bit like thank you for letting me in and letting me guide you in this amazing journey into who you were born to be because that's essentially what it is. It's human design is really an energetic map of all the gifts, all the challenges that you have within you that tell the story of what you're here to do, how you're here to do it. And it is like this amazing wayfinding tool. Um, and that's, and it's always a gift when I get to show someone that because more often than not, the reaction I get from people is that they feel seen and they also feel like the parts of them that they haven't been showing are in there and they feel this permission to finally start being the full expression of themselves. I agree. And and I, I found out that I'm a projector. Mm -hmm. That was really fascinating to you. And, and my friend told me who who's into all of this. She's like, Cheryl, I think you're a projector when I was explaining certain things and some struggles I was having. And it was good to know because then you learn, okay, well, you kind of have this guidance system mm -hmm. on, okay, well, now I know this about myself. So how can I um, use it to my advantage? And maybe next time Thanks. not maybe get hurt or um, have something happen where you're kind of yes. excited by it. Exactly. Right. Well, and it really gives you a way to know how you can live in alignment with who you naturally are, because a lot of the human design system is about getting us out of our heads, out into the, like that mind spin that happens back into our bodies. And the, in human design, there's five main types and so, like you said, you're a projector and there's the other types are there's manifestors, which I'm a manifester. There's generators, there's manifesting generators, and there's reflectors. And each of these five types are designed to live life in a very different way because we're each here to contribute in our own unique way. And human design is actually, it's much more than that. Types are sort of like saying, I know your name is Cheryl. And, you know, there's so much more to you. And so when people first get their human design map, um, which is something that you can look up for free on my website, like if you're listening to this, you can go to my website and I'll say free human design chart, look yours up. You'll find out what your type is, which is your first, you know, step into it. And then there's all these other layers, like there's authority, which is how we're naturally designed to make decisions. And with you, I remember you were self-projected authority, which is actually a person who's designed to talk out their decisions, to hear their own truth. Yes. And I was asking, I remember asking you, you know, is that something that happens? And what happens when people try to give you advice as you're doing that? Yeah. Which 
is not something you they're supposed to do. They're supposed to just let you talk it out because you're the one coming to the decision, not them. <laughs> yes, yes, that uh, is so true. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it it's a really I mean it's an amazing system. It is and it is a system. It like some people are like, well what is human design? Where did this come from? And it is a modality that was it has mystic origins. Um, I like to say, uh, you know, at this point, I usually say like, put on your tinfoil hats, we're going for a ride. (laughs) Um, But, you know, it was channeled in by a man who, uh, at the time, his name was Robert Allen. He, it was in Portugal. He climbed into a tree. He heard what he deemed the voice. And over several days, the voice told him everything that comprise the foundation of human design. Now, human design is not from nowhere. It actually is based in the foundation of four different wisdom traditions that we've had for centuries. Astrology, the I Ching, the chakra system, and the um, Judaic Kabbalah all live within human design. They're all components. Uh, And in human design, it all comes together to give you, because astrology is an amazing wayfinding tool, the, uh, the I Ching as well, the chakra system, like these are all systems that are essentially storytelling tools that help us tell the story of who we are. And with human design, it comes together into this funnel to really give you this clear picture of all the facets that are within you that you may sense, but now you've got a clear map and a description so that you can really like check in when people are, you know, cause I always like to say like the world around us will tell us who we are if we let it. But when we really see the truth of who we are in our human design, then we can say back to the world, nope, that's not me. You got me wrong. (laughs) So great because when I was younger, I was allowing the world to tell me what I should do with my life and like, Hey, you look like you might be interested in doing this or do that. And I would do all those things. I would listen to others Mm -hmm. and then I would end up not liking it and then hurting myself in the long run. And when Mm -hmm. you said earlier, like I like to talk and talk things through to figure it out and not be told like what to do. Mm -hmm. Um, that resonates with me so much because when I'm able to just speak it out, then I can figure out, okay, this is what I need to do next. This is my next step. And exactly. Yeah. You are your best guide. And that's the thing is our authority is the way we make decisions. And for you, your truth comes out when you speak it out. Yes. It's not that somebody's going to drop in with like your answer for you. You actually have your answer within you. And the only way it's going to come out is through that speaking. For me, I'm designed to wait out. I have emotional authority. There's seven types of authorities. There's self-projected, which is what you have, where you're designed to speak it out. There's emotional, which is what I have, which is you're actually designed to wait out your emotional wave. Mm. So I, I always say this is sleep on it authority. You don't say yes or no right away to when someone asks you something. You don't make snap decisions. You wait to make sure that that decision stays consistent. It's it's like being on the ocean. You wait until the ocean settles. You're not at the top of the wave surfing it. You're not at the bottom being drowned by it. You're, you're kind of calmly ready to say yes or no. Um, there's sacral authority, which the generators and manifesting generators are the only types that have sacral. But that's that gut knowingness mm. that in the moment... But the, the challenge, and you'd think that would be the easiest because it's like you literally get a like, I know this, it's a yes or it's a no. But I find that with sacral authority, then people get that and they know that the person who they're giving the answer to might not want to hear that answer. And then they go up into their head and they start trying to figure out what the answer should be instead of trusting what your body just gave you. And that's the thing is like authority is about getting us out of our heads. It's literally feeling into our body for that truth, that energetic truth that lives within us. And once you start to trust it, 
it's an amazing way of finding your way because here's the thing usually actually no not usually we always know our truth we're just trained to 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 basically doubt our truth yes so true yes yeah I think we're conditioned from a young age very with my kids I always try to tell them you know to trust their intuition Mm -hmm. trust Mm -hmm. what it is trust your body trust your body trust your intuition and yeah that we all have this guidance system Mm -hmm. but like yeah three figures tell us no that's not right and you should be doing this (laughs) Exactly. Well, and it's, it's one of those things where the more I learned about human design, the more I got a little angry about, I mean, I've always been a little angry. I'm a manifester. My signature out of alignment emotion is anger. So like when I get fired up, it it, is so anger to me is an emotion that indicates something needs to shift, that something's not in alignment for me, for you as a projector, your signature emotion is bitterness. Which bitterness isn't like, oh gosh, I hate the world. It's It can feel like disgruntlement. It can feel just like, mm, you know. Uh, and then, so each type has its own emotion that helps tell you when you're in alignment or out of alignment. So generators and manifesting generators, it's frustration. It's that like, oh, I can't stand this that's a good indication to you that something needs to shift. And for reflectors, it's disappointment. Like, oh, I'm so disappointed with this. And that's again, another indicator. And so even those, like it's getting into the body because our emotions are in our body. It's how we're feeling. Yeah. And it it's this wayfinding system that when you learn how to read the map, because we've been using it our whole lives, but because we're taught in our society to go into our heads, like think it out, make the list, do the point A and point B of why you should do this. And we learn to depend on that. But the thing that is fighting with it is our bodies know, like kids are amazing at it, actually. They are. If you, when kids come in, They're totally tuned into their bodies. You ask a two-year-old what they want. They're going to grunt at you. Yes, no. They're going to like, they, they don't need five minutes to decide whether they want that popsicle or not. They know in the moment. Adults have all the stories, all the pieces of information they've collected from outside of themselves that have gotten them out of touch with their bodies and into their heads and questioning whether they even know their truth. And so that's what I love about human design is it gives people a way to get back to knowing what's true for you so that you can start to experiment and go, does this feel true to me? How do I activate this? How do I move forward? You know, the simplest way to boil it down is like what energy is pulling me forward in my life right now? What's lighting me up or What's making me feel like somebody just pushed me under water and is like, I, I feel like I'm suffocating. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, um, I also wanted to talk about story lab Mm -hmm. thing that you are uh, doing. doing Yes. You're launching. uh, I am. Yes. So I am, so I work one-on-one with clients. Like you said, you came to me for your birthday. We had a reading um, and I love doing that. I take people where they're coming in and they're just learning about human design and we'll do like an introductory soul path reading so that you can kind of get started on knowing who you are and what your story is. Um, And then I even do business readings where if you're a solopreneur or working with others and really wanting to know the story of like how you're designed to be in business, we do that. And I am also doing this group program, which is the Summer Story Lab. And it is about getting to know the facets of your human design in a group where we're going in from the foundation from you don't need to know anything coming into this program about your human design 
because what you're going to learn is you're going to learn what your type is and what that means for you. You're going to learn what your authority is and how to activate that in your life. You're going to learn what your profile is. And that is kind of like, it gives you even more information about you. And then you're going to learn about the shapes in your human design, which are called their centers that correspond to the chakra system and how those affect you and meet what they mean for you in relationships because the centers really act out in our relationships. And then you're even going to go into all the numbers. Like when you pull up your chart on my site, you'll see all these little symbols with numbers next to it, which are the planets and the gates. And you're actually even going to learn what the planets mean for you and your design and what those gates specifically mean in terms of the gate, the gifts and the challenges that you're going to encounter. So it is a four week program that actually spans over eight weeks because in between each class, you're going to have a week for integration because we're going really deep into, you're going to very thoroughly understand your design. And then what we're going to do is rewrite your story. That story that you've been trudging along with saying, this is who I am. This is what I'm doing. You're going to use your design to clearly be able to see as a map of where you have been, what your challenges might be, and then where you're going. And literally through the process of taking it almost into like a fairy tale zone. And the, the beautiful thing of this process, it's actually science backed because our mind is an amazing thing. It will actually buy any story that we tell it often enough. So if you tell your story, to your mind of, I can't do this. I tried it. I'm a failure. I'm never going to succeed. Your mind, your mind is basically like, yeah, sure. Okay. You're a failure. We're not going to have open up any more opportunities for you. Things are going to be really challenging. And when you learn to shift that story and clear it, because we're also incorporating in the story lab, it's a lab. <laughs> I'm bringing in the emotional freedom technique or tapping to help clear those stories that you might have been telling yourself that are holding you back. And then we're even going to bring in sound frequencies to help clear parts of you where, which have been keeping you stuck in the past from moving forward. Because here's the thing, you might have been like me where you had rewritten your story. You'd been, I have, I've done hypnosis. I've done visualization. And it worked to a certain extent, but there was always a part of my brain that kind of went, I don't buy this story because I wasn't looking at the full picture and I wasn't also clearing the past. And so that's the thing in the story lab, we're going to bring you through that whole thing so that you can create a new story and a new vision for yourself, even incorporating art. Like at the end, we're actually going to do a really fun art project that no art skills required because, you know, that's my jam. That's what I talked about before is I run a membership uh, called Cultivating and Creativity, which now lives as a you can go through that program as a year of art. But it's really like getting out of your like, oh, I have to create the perfect art to really getting back into your body to create something that sort of activates that vision for yourself. And so the story lab is essentially a journey that takes you through your human design to understand who you are at a deep soul level and be able to see it and then use that as a foundation to create a new story for where you're going. And the beautiful thing about this process is every time you're ready to grow, you can go back through this process to grow your story from who you are to who you're becoming and take yourself through this process again and again to keep moving your life forward. I love that. And I am going to be joining. So <laughs> you told me the last time we did our human design course uh, together and you told me about that. I was like, oh, that sounds good. I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm so glad you're in. And I, it, I've i done this. So here's the thing, like I'm facilitating it. I'm an advanced story lab facilitator because I learned, you know, this has become partly what I learned and also my own 
explorations because that's just the way I am as an artist with visioning and all that. But I'm an advanced story lab facilitator and the person who tested all of this in the lab is my teacher, Dr. Karen Curry Parker, who is the person who um, quantum human design is what she created. And then the story lab is what she created to help people. She took this process into a lab with people who are ready to tell a different story about their life, about the things that had happened to them. And she actually, this was her doctorate. She took IGA samples of, had them write a story of them as it was, where they were really stuck in those stories that didn't empower them. And she took a a reading of the IGA sample, which is basically, um, our wellness in our body and other things. And it's through uh, our, our spit and it tested low. And then she had them, took them through this process to rewrite their story, to go from being once upon a time in the past, there was a woman named Jaji who went through these challenges, which you'll be able to encounter, you'll be able to find in your human design and also just in your life. And then she grew And she saw the path forward and she learned about her gifts and all this. And she wrote a new story for herself. And when Karen in this lab tested the IGA samples, when these people told their new story, their IGA levels rose significantly. Their health, their well-being rose significantly just through telling a new story. And the the version we're going to be going through incorporates other aspects, which are going to, you know, just more energetic alignment so that on the other end of all of this you're going to be like you know Cheryl (laughs) 2.0 that is amazing how she did those tests and but that that is really cool because uh you know there are people out there that do these things and but they're they're not really tested out or you know exactly Yeah, no, and I love that. Exactly. And it's funny because like in her human design, she has a lot of logic circuitry and logic circuitry in human design needs proof. It needs to be proved. And so that's like, that's what she needed. I have a lot of knowing circuitry where things just drop in and I'm like, oh, that's really interesting. And I trust that it's true, but I don't need the proof, but I always appreciate the proof because like you said, there's a lot of, there's a lot of way. And There's so much research that really does support the fact that our thoughts do recreate our reality and we can take it to the next level when we start incorporating these other modalities. Like, I mean, art, you know, there's a reason why vision boards work because it creates that vision of the life you're going towards and keeps your, keeps you targeted on that. And so this whole process rewrites your story, creates that vision, clears the energy body from those old stories, and then, you know, weaves in that new one so that you're ready to, you know, thrive. Yeah, I love that. I I saw like right now a vision of like a painting and like you know how sometimes a painting doesn't work the way you want and you'll just like go over it, you know, like mm-hmm. parts that don't work out and you just go yeah. over it. So that's how I'm uh, visualizing it, you know, and just improving I, it a little bit here and then a little bit there. And, you know, I love that. Cause that is, that's exactly it. It's like our life is, we are the artists of our own life. And anytime that we decide we're ready to make a change, you just, take that spot and you paint over it Mm -hmm. and you can clear those old stories. Anytime you're ready, it's, it's a decision and a choice. And it's funny because I shared, I was sharing just the other day, how years ago I was working with energy healer and a coach of mine. And she said, Jaji, you're an amazing storyteller, but you're telling the wrong stories. And at the time I was like, what are you talking about? I'm telling great stories. And now I realize I was telling a lot of victim stories. I wanted her to heal me from all the things that I had suffered with. And I was so focused on them that I wasn't moving forward because I wasn't doing that other part, which was creating really like the, 
the bridge from where I was to where I wanted to be. And it was because I didn't understand what my gifts were. I didn't, I knew what I wanted, but I had no idea how to get there because I didn't realize at the time that that was the things I was, that were pulling me forward were literally, now I can see it in my human design. I understand. I look, I know the whole thing of story in my gates. And I realized that the thing I've always wanted to do that I've been passionately moving forwards towards or dreaming of is literally written into the story of who I'm here, here to be and what I'm here to do. And it wasn't until I saw my human design and understood it that I finally went, oh my God, I'm not just dreaming. It's in me. And I am, by not doing that, I am feeling this disconnect from my soul. And that's why it's so painful because I need to get there. Yes. And it's part of me. And so now, now I can read that map and I'm like, yes, I, that is part of my journey. That's part of my gifts. And I own it in a way that I wasn't able to before when I was just, you know, trying to hip my, hypnotize myself into believing it or, you know, coach my way through it. Now I anchor into this is who I am. I am. Yeah. I love that. And it shifts everything. So, yeah. <laughs> and I see the shift within you since uh, our last um, podcast episode we have, I see this change in you and I just think it's so beautiful and I want to join you along. <laughs> well, I want you to join me too. Cause, and that's the thing, everybody has these gifts within them. And the more that I can connect people to seeing their own gifts, you shift and you bring your gifts to the world in a way that you weren't before. And that makes the world this amazing place that I want to live in. And so it's like my mission is really to help people see the beauty and the strength that lives within them and also see the places, the challenges, the, the you know, because every gate, every part of your human design has a gift and a challenge. And when we see those challenges, then we don't get stuck in them. We go, oh, I see you. That's that little thing that I get into when I'm, you know, in my shadow self. And I know that on the other side of that, there's a gift and I can lean into that because that's where I'm really meant to be. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like what you were saying earlier too, what you, what you're doing, it's like a ripple effect, you mm -hmm. know, it's ripple effect into, and you're, you're helping one person and the other person will help. You know, just, exactly. You know, I always talk about that on my podcast, and uh, I think that's beautiful. And yeah. Well, and I think the more people appreciate their unique, creative spirits <laughs> that we're all born with, the more we get into a space where we appreciate others for their unique, creative spirits. And that's how peace forms is when we don't try to change someone when we see them for all of who they are and we think it's an amazing gift that you are in the world in this way, thank you for being you. It shifts the whole world. Yeah, I agree. Oh, what, I, what else I was going to bring is, I think it's so cool. I once saw that you also do um, art related to the person's human design, which is just so cool. Like, yeah, uh, I think it's a great way that you incorporated your artwork, which is just so I feel your art is very just feminine. And mm -hmm. you create these hands with flowers in them and butterflies. And I don't know, it's just so lovely and natural. And um, yeah, I, yeah, it's wonderful. well, and and it's, it was funny because what you're talking about is I have two things that I've been doing, but the thing I think you're referring to is I'm doing a project called the 64 gates, which is the 64 gates in human design, which are those numbers you see next to your planets. I've been finding people who have those gates and taking photographs of them, interviewing them to learn about those gates and then creating artwork that embodies the essence of that gate. And then contemplation. So for me, it actually started as an impulse to learn. 
and to comprehend in a way that was through my art. But now what it's actually evolving into is um, it's going to be a card deck because I have so many people who have been reacting to it going, I want to have these because they're, you know, they're these beautiful pieces of people that also have these contemplations of what the gift is in that gate and what the struggles are so that you can really see like what's within you. And, um, and so that's, and then, and then the other thing I, I've done, which is actually, I don't, it's right behind me, is an illustration, the embodied portraits, your embodied human design, where I kept checking my design. And so I made a portrait with my human design circuitry within me so that I could check that all the time. And I do that for um, clients when they want like a beautiful piece of artwork that actually shows them what the, keeps that human design presence, the embodiment of who they are. Um, so yeah, <laughs> my passions unite, <laughs> art creating and, you know, like, cause human design for me is embodiment. It is like being able to see the beauty of who you were born to be. And I've always created art that is people. Like, I, like you were saying, I did this whole series where it was hands and flowers and it was all about the like creation you know, and, and the spirit of nature and the spirit of ourselves. Um, and so this is sort of that, you know, next facet of exploration and integration. I love it. I love it. And how can people sign up for your class and find you? And I'm, I'm going to put uh, everything, your links in the show notes as well. Yes. So give them the information right now. Yeah. So if you're listening to this before June 27th, uh, the Story Lab is on my site. When you go there on the front page, you'll see a link to it. Um, if you listen to this after June 27th, there should be a place to put your information for when I host the next one. Because um, I know already from the results that I've been getting that people are excited, as excited about this as I am. Um, and my website is jajeives.com. It's J-A-H-J-E-I-V-E-S.com. Um, on Instagram, I'm at jajeives. And uh, on my website, and I'm sure Cheryl will put the link to this, there is a thing that says free human design chart. When you land on my homepage, just scroll down a little and you'll see where you can enter in your birth date, time, and location and get your human design chart and a small video that will teach you a little bit about your type. It'll give you an introduction to your human design. And when you get that, it will trigger an email sequence that will actually then deliver you a little video in a couple of days about understanding your authority and then a few other things so that you can get like a little mini introduction and understanding of what lives within you. So, um, I can't wait. I'm really excited to join you. And um, I hope that others join because of this podcast. That's what this podcast is for to, you know, share different modalities because um, there's so many out there. And I, that's how I grew as an artist, as a person, as a mom, as a, like, I feel like it's helped me in so many ways learning these. Yes. Modalities. And I, I, I love that you bring it all together here. And for me, I think, especially, you know, as an artist who found human design, I, I find that it really resonates because it's a visual. And this process of the story lab, like I said, the final thing we do is create a piece of art that anchors in that full story vision of where you're heading. And the creation of the story is a piece of art as well. So uh, it is really activating all those creative tools that we have that at artists, we really have honed them. Yes. But it's filling in the gaps and sort of giving you giving you the palette from which you can paint your life in an even more vivid, vivid way. Like you said, maybe the canvas you've been working on in your life isn't exactly what you want. You can join me, take a little rag, wipe out the parts that you put there because somebody said that it looked good there. And maybe that wasn't you. And then you can learn your human design and paint yourself as you actually are to move forward into the life that you actually have been dreaming of because it's calling you forward. Jaji, thank you so much. I love that. That was perfect ending. 
our beautiful <laughs> conversation. And you know, it's funny, I wanted you to come and interview you on this and it, it just worked out perfectly. So thank you again. And um, I can't wait for people to hear this and I, I really hope they join you in this. Thank you so much, Cheryl. I appreciate you and all you do. <laughs> thank you.